Going on social media can be tricky, really, really tricky because there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to growing a followership, a thought leadership on social media because one, one of the key things is usually when you're starting out and you have zero subscribers or zero followers, you know, just zero, no one is following you yet, you just set up your page or let's say you have less than 10 people or less than 100 people, the propensity is there for you to think, how am I going to be taken seriously? Especially when you are looking at other people's content, people who have thousands and millions of followers, there is a possibility for you to second guess yourself, delay in starting at all, or start and abscond. You don't want to know the amount of pages on social media platforms, on YouTube, on Facebook, that people have started and abandoned. I mean, they are almost numbering the number, the ones that have very consistent and active people because those people had an idea when they started out, right? But the fear of, ah, I'm posting every day, I'm giving this my time, I'm not seeing the level of engagement and followership that I'm expecting before I can possibly get attention, get monetized and all of that. And it can be really frustrating, I get that. But right, let me tell you something, just like in life, if you want to make anything succeed, there are a few things you have to put in consideration. So I'm going to help you solve one of those problems of how do you, what do you do when you don't have subscribers and nobody is viewing you yet, nobody is following you yet, you have zero subscribers, you have nobody following you. I'm going to give you four ways. These are things that will help you and I'm going to use practical experiences I've had to explain them. So number one, when you don't have any subscriber and views yet, will you just get there and say, hi, no one is here now, um, but I just want to say that I'm here to stay. Uh, please let me know when you're here. I'll be right back. Is that what they're going to say? Oh, no, you're not going to do that. So first of all, what I want you to think about first is that thing you set out to do. So your why. For instance, assuming I want to set up a YouTube channel to help upcoming book editors to succeed, right and i get there i create the account of course i'll have zero subscribers or maybe i use my other gmail accounts <laughs> to follow that account so that i feel like i have two or three accounts um, or rather two or three subscribers right but i still know it's me right now i'm talking to an empty room and that's okay it is perfectly fine to talk to an empty room as a content creator because that's how everyone started that's exactly how everyone started okay so the first thing i needed to do is Using the example of me as an editor, experienced for 15 years, trying to help people who are starting out. The first thing I do is imagine your former self, right? Imagine how I used to be before 15 years ago. That time I had skill. I knew I could spot English errors. I knew I had a passion to help people get their work corrected. I knew that possibly or not, I could also make money doing this, but I wasn't confident enough to charge. Do you understand? You see the picture I'm painting? I had all of that going for me at that time. I hadn't started a business, but did I have the skill? Yes. Did I love to do it? Yes. Now, I'll think of me at that time and begin to provide answers to some of the questions that could have been plaguing me at that time, right? So make your content to answer the questions, the fears, the concerns, the doubts, the inferiority complex, the imposter syndrome, the I cannot do it yet feelings that I used to have at that time. Before you, you are done addressing most of the questions that I could have been bothered with, trust me, you, you may have had already 30 videos. Trust me. So that's one way. So let me give you an instance of the kind of content I will possibly create. If I was to create a, a channel for editors, I, was, I remember some of the things that I, I was going through. I'll ask myself, since I don't have a laptop yet, since I don't even have money to print complimentary cards or set up ad on, on social media or create a website, well, how would I be able to let people know that I'm a good editor and they should give me a try, right? I remember that word of mouth was what worked for me. So I'm going to go ahead and create a video called the ultimate marketing tool that you are not yet using as an editor and why you should use it, for instance. And I'm going to go ahead and do a 8 minutes, 10 minutes video explaining how word of mouth got me my first 10 contacts who I edited their work. 
You get what I mean? And that is going to inspire somebody who is a beginner to say, oh, oh my God, I shouldn't keep waiting, right? I'm going to jump in doing it. That's one video. I'm, I'm going to look at some of the fears I had. Do I need another certification so for people to trust me that I could handle their work? and all of that i'm going to go ahead and do a video addressing that i'm going to look at okay should i overhaul a writer's total thoughts and write it my way if i'm an editor you know and, and that's a no so i'm going to do a video letting you know that you don't need to change those thoughts and tone and all of that and help you understand how to actually assess the work that you are to edit before you start doing it that way you are not going to mix up things i'm going to look at some of the doubts i had like Will somebody take me seriously? Because I remember creating my first blog, advertising what I do. I put my services and all that. And how that eventually got me my first international deal. So I'm going to imagine me before that happened and say, if I set up a blog, can I, okay, something like, can I use a blog to market my book editing business? Do you understand? And in that video, I will now explain how I did mine and how it got me a client. You get what I mean? So um, I hope you can get the picture of what I mean from this number one. Okay, let's go to number two. What is the second thing I advise you to do if you don't have any subscribers, no person following you and all of that? I will say, listen to other people's audience. The people. So look for somebody who is already doing a video like that or rather a channel like that. Look at their comment section what what other questions people ask them afterwards usually most of them don't go ahead to respond go to their comment section and soak up some of the concerns people are showing people who are interested in that field are showing write them down and begin to provide solutions to them by way of your videos i do this one a whole lot and see that's the easiest way you know when people talk about market survey visibility that's actually right there and you don't have to go anywhere to do it you just need to get on researching those who are doing something close to what you're doing or exactly what you have your mind to do then look at your audience that they have created and the other concerns that they are expressing use your videos to answer their deep longings or answer their questions okay now another thing of course you must have one or two people who trust your skills in that area of editing and i'm using editing for an, an example right it can be anything that you love to do or currently doing or about to do right so look at people who already know what you do and love it people who are already following you or family members friends who are who are supporting you to start this channel ask them a few questions about what they would rather have that issues they are having little audience you have already and what their concerns are provide them with solutions using your videos right with these tips i've given you you can almost do 100 videos trust me you don't have to also take a lot of points take them one step at a time after doing this the next thing of course you do is of course you're going to see that naturally your subscribers will start growing you start attracting the kind of people who love that kind of thing that you're talking about who have the same concerns and fears who are going to be saying thank you so much for answering this was so right on time and that's how to build your audience so the next the fourth step is build your audience go ahead and build your audience remember at the end of the day content is what will help you build your audience okay now i'm going to come back again on the podcast let me know if you enjoyed this and let me know what else you want me to address and i will bring it right back See you in the next podcast. Bye.